Yo, yo, YouTube, what's up with your boy, Sports and Fitness Rants? <laughs> I'm back, guys. Click that like button. Subscribe to my channel. What's up, y'all? Welcome back, guys. Welcome back, man. Got another great video for you guys today. As usual, man, you guys know the deal on this channel. It's all about setting the record straight, stopping the lies, stopping the narratives, <laughs> stopping them from rewriting history. And forgive the rain right now. I hope you guys can hear me good. I know you guys can probably see the reflection of the raindrops in the video here. Uh, it's pouring outside right now. Uh, where I am, uh, but we're still going to do a video, and I guess I hope you guys can hear me well, because it's coming down pretty hard, but in this video, we're going to speak about LeBron James and his quote-unquote special son, Bronny James, and how they both combined for eight turnovers in the game yesterday, the preseason debut for LeBron James and his son, Bronny Jr., right, against the Phoenix Suns, and the win and the loss is irrelevant, they lost the game, it doesn't matter, it's a preseason game. But what we must focus on is the, the term that LeBron James used to describe his son the other day was that he was special, that he knew that Bronny was special from when he was like six, seven years old. And, and I've laughed at this because it, although many of us, I've said, we believe our kids are special to us personally. Like I said, my son's special to me. For LeBron James to call his son Bronny special, the way that he used it, he was relating it to as if he was like a special basketball player. He said, oh, I've seen this before, right? He was relating Bronny Jr. to himself when he was in high school coming into the NBA. And that's nowhere near the case, guys. Bronny James is nowhere on the level of his father. And that's the facts, guys. And we know this. And we're going to talk about it in this video because, once again, LeBron James and his son go out there. They each have four turnovers apiece, right? The legacy of LeBron James, a turnover king. And his son, Bronny, doing the same thing. Eight turnovers combined in the game last night. We're going to talk about it in this video, guys. Once again, and you guys know the deal, man. I want to thank you guys, everyone across the world, everyone across the states that's been supporting my channel. Once again, guys, you know I am truly humble, guys. Thank you very much for all the support. Shout out to the membership. Thank you very much, guys. I am truly, truly humble, man. And you guys know what to do. Turn the volume all the way up. Hit that play button. Remember, these videos are for educational purposes. And let's roll. So, yes, guys, excuse me for a second, guys. So like I said, we're going to talk about LeBron James and his son, Bronny Jr., his quote-unquote special son, and how they combined for eight turnovers last night in the preseason debut of the Los, Los Angeles Lakers versus the Phoenix Suns. Now, like I said, the, the loss is irrelevant, right? They lost the preseason game. Okay, whatever. The wins and loss are irrelevant. When you talk about the preseason and we talk about preseason basketball, you what you want to focus on is figuring out your rotations and, you know, seeing the, develop, the development of the players right from the summer league and into the coming of the season, right? And these are the kind of things you want to focus on, running your plays, finding out where guys, you know, uh, are, are more comfortable shooting the ball from or where their spots are, building the team, the team chemistry. These are the kinds of things that you want to work on in the preseason, right? Working all the kinks out, so to speak, right? Trying to, you know, correct all the mistakes and, and things of that nature. And for something, or for a team like the Los Angeles Lakers, they have a lot of moving parts here, right? You have a new head coach and J.J. Redick who has no coaching experience. So not only do you bring in a new head coach, you have a coach that has no coaching experience whatsoever at the professional level. And I don't believe at any level J.J. Redick has been a head coach. At, uh, so once again, no experience. So you have J.J. Redick coming in, and we all know why he's there. Right to be the fall guy for LeBron James and to basically be the yes man for LeBron James and allow LeBron James to do whatever he wants during the regular season, offer no pushback or anything resistance against LeBron James and the way that he carries himself, all his antics, the way that he manipulates the basketball, he dominates the ball and controls basically what everyone else is doing on the basketball court. Right, Not helping his teammates help him. So if we get all that, right, you have some new players coming in, right, you have a couple of draft picks and, and things of that nature, this is the Los Angeles Lakers, this is really any team that LeBron James is on, there's always moving parts because he always needs more help, right, he's so great, but yet he always needs somebody else, he always needs another player that can do X, Y, Z, or a guy that can do this, he needs that, he needs all these things, right, he needs max money, LeBron James needs all this stuff, man, once again, all these excuses, but yet he's still, he, they want to tell you he's so great, but he needs all this help, all these excuses, so we think about the preseason, man, and, and we're talking about LeBron James and his son. And I'm talking about the eight turnovers that they had combined, right? Four for his son and four for LeBron James. So picking up right where LeBron James always leaves off when the regular season, uh, in the regular season, it turned the ball over to high volume. I've told you guys, LeBron James has now worked on his turnover problems. So the man every single season 
turns the ball over three and a half, four times a game. Literally every year, guys, LeBron James, three and a half, four turnovers a game. Easily, you could chalk it up at least every single night. And then there are some games LeBron James is going to go out there and have five, six, seven turnovers. Because this is what he does. He stumbles and bumbles a lot. He makes bad passes, right? He travels and carries a ball like what they don't even call. So once again, like I always tell you guys, how many turnovers will LeBron James really have, right, any given moment? If they really officiated him the way they're supposed to, if they really called the travels, if they called the palming violations, if they called the offensive fouls, how many turnovers would he really have? Not to mention all the foul calls they get in their favor. So it's the complete opposite. LeBron James doesn't get fouls called against him. Meanwhile, the referees are calling all the fouls on the other team, which is why the Lakers are always a plus 500 over the last two seasons. They've been plus 1,000 from the free throw line, guys. Plus 1,000. That's insane, and yet they're fighting for a play in every single year. That's called mediocrity as best. That's called literally being carried to the play-in. Literally carried to the play-in. But the LeBron James fans, the media, will be talking about his numbers. Oh, LeBron James averaged 25 points a game. In year 21, he looks like he's 25 again. He looks like he's 21 again. He looks like he's 18. So he puts up these numbers. He gets celebrated for putting up numbers on a team that's hovering around the 7th, 8th, and ninth seed all season long. The Lakers were fighting to get in the play-in. Not to win the division or finish in a top five or a top three seed. They're fighting for a play in every single season. So the numbers that LeBron James gets celebrated for, once again, they're not impacting winning. And when we think about last night, the Bronny James, LeBron James dynamic, once again, this exposes LeBron James, like I said in the other video. He's not playing to win, right? He has nothing to prove, he said. And no one's putting any pressure on LeBron James to win. No one holds him to any standard. So they allow him to go out there, lollygag on defense, right? And just chuck up a bunch of shots, put up these stats, even though the team's not winning, they're not competitive, and LeBron James hasn't played defense in years. They won't hold him to that standard. They won't call him out for that and say, yeah, it's easy to average 25 points a game every year and chuck up 18, 19, 20 shots a game and do X, Y, Z when you're literally not playing half the game. You're literally standing around on defense, resting on defense for your offense, that's not impressive. I'm not impressed with that. You guys remember a couple of years ago, LeBron James was trying to break Michael Jordan's record for the oldest scoring champ in NBA's history. So what did LeBron James decide to do? He decided to play as, as minimal games as possible, as few games as possible on a team that was garbage, wasn't going anywhere. As minimal games as possible so that he could finagle that scoring title. And what happened? He ended up not getting it, right? And went to Joel Embiid, if I remember correctly, that season. But LeBron James was attempting to win a scoring title while only playing 52 games or 55 games. And he really thought that was going to be respected. No one would have respected that fake scoring title. I told you, a lot of these guys today, over the last five seasons, they put up some numbers when they're only playing 60 games, 65 games, 55 games, 50 games. I'm not impressed with guys putting up numbers missing 30, 40 games. It's not impressive, guys. There's a big difference between you leading the league in scoring at 65 games and you at 82 games or you at 60 games or you at 80 games. It's a huge difference, guys. Huge difference. And that's LeBron James' mentality to put the stats up right at the cost of winning. And that's what he was trying to do and attempting to do that season. Once again, trying to chase Michael Jordan, who won scoring title at the age of 35 years old, right, the oldest scoring champ in NBA's history, while playing all 82 games and being one of the elite level defensive players at the time, at his position, in the NBA, first team all defense. LeBron James ain't sniffing those, ain't sniffing that stuff, ain't sniffing it. So spare me the 25 points a game when you're loudly gagging and standing around on defense. You're walking off the court early, right? You're blaming the teammates. You're not taking any accountability. And more of the same for the turnovers for LeBron James. And it looks like his son, Bronny, is going to continue in his father's footsteps. He's going to father follow the legacy of LeBron James. Which is to do what? Not play any defense consistently. Turn the ball over at a high volume your entire career. Never work on your turnover problems because he still can't dribble the ball. The pass that he makes are sometimes ill-advised. Turns the ball over. Once again, makes bad decisions at the end of games. But they talk about his high IQ. This LeBron James stumbling and bumbling out there because of the poor footwork of LeBron James. And like I said, they still don't call all the offensive fouls or the carries and the traveling violations against him. But there's LeBron James. So, Bronny's out there with four turnovers 
in like, what, 16 minutes of playing time, whatever the case may be, didn't score a single point. And yes, Bronny James has, they're noting Bronny James for playing defense. This is what they're tell, trying to tell you and sell you a narrative that LeBron James Jr., Bronny James, is somehow going to be an elite level defensive player. This is what they're trying to pump him up as an elite level defensive player in the league right now, in a league that doesn't have elite level defense, that doesn't play elite level defense, that's not concerned with elite level defense. The tough defensive guys in the NBA today are not on the same level as the top defensive guys in past eras because guys back in the day were allowed to use physicality to play defense, which adds to your defensive intensity, which adds to your defensive ability. If you're allowed to be physical on these guys, that helps you on defense. It gives you more advantage against the offensive player, where in this era, the advantages all go to the offensive guy. Back in the 50s and the 60s, the advantages went to defensive guys. In the 80s and the 90s, to me, it seemed like it was pretty even both ways. You could use physicality on the offensive end, and you could use physicality on the defensive end. Now, these some of these players, like a LeBron James, is allowed to use his physicality on offense, but you cannot use any physicality on the defensive end. It doesn't make any sense, guys. It's once again, they put all the, the, uh, the favor, everything, all the advantages on the offensive side of the ball here. That's why these offensive numbers these guys put up, the stats, quote-unquote stats they're putting up, it's not as impressive in this era of NBA when you have all the events on your side and the defense is essentially handcuffed to a degree. So being a great defender or a quote-unquote great defender in this era is not the same as you being a great defender in past eras. Like I said, where guys were able to use physicality and play defense, they gave more effort on the defensive end. That's a problem for a lot of guys today. They may have changed the rules on defense and the things you're allowed to do on the defensive end. But the effort should never change. And that's what I always tell you guys on this channel. The effort has changed. The mindset has changed of a lot of these guys, especially the top, top players. A lot of the top guys don't want to be two-way players. They don't want to give the effort on the defensive end, right? They want to go out there, chuck their shots up. They want to be known for putting up numbers and scoring. But they don't want to go out there and earn it on the defensive end. Is a mindset change, guys. Right? Guys don't want to be role players or play a role Everyone wants to be the superstar. Everybody wants to dribble the ball over the court. Everybody wants to chuck up the shots. Nobody wants to do the dirty work. Nobody wants to be a true leader. No one wants to be a true competitor. Right? Everyone wants to just wear goofy outfits to the game. Right? Hang out with celebrities. Make TikTok videos and, and do these stupid dances. Nobody wants to be a true competitor. Nobody wants to show any heart and grit. These guys are sitting out with sore ankles and sore feet and, you know, jammed fingers. Mental problems. They're mentally exhausted because their lives are so hard. Their lives are harder than our lives. So they need mental breaks. It's ridiculous, man. Once again, this is why a lot of these guys are not respected and you can't put them on the same level as some of the other all-time greats. So when we think about the eight turnovers from LeBron James and his son combined, this is what, once again, they get exposed in this idea that LeBron James Jr., what he said, yo, my son's special. Your son is special. He's not special. In the grand scheme of NBA players, the talent in the NBA, the guys coming out of college into the NBA, guys who were recruited or guys that were drafted, things of that nature, Bronny James is not special in that regard. He's not special in the overall scheme of NBA's history of new players coming into the league. He's nowhere near that. Is he Victor Wembanyama from last season? No, he's not. Is he Zion Williamson from a couple of years back? No, he's not. Is he even a John Morant? No, he's not. He, who is Bronny James? He's nobody. You know who he is, guys? He's LeBron James' son, right? He's He had to actually name his son after himself. Once again, goes to the narcissism of LeBron James because he needs another LeBron James out there. We need another LeBron James in the world, in the NBA, Bronny Jr. So once again, guys, this is what we're alluding to here. Is LeBron James' son special in that regard? No, he's not. But LeBron James says he's special because he's his kid. I told you in that video. That's the only reason why he says he's special is because he's my son. He's Bronny Jr. Of course he's special. And I told his mother when he was seven years old, six years old, yo, this guy's special. This kid's special. I think we can all agree. I think everyone out there can agree that Bronny Jr. is only in the NBA because his father is LeBron James. Right? We can all agree on that. Right? 
I don't care that he's in the NBA and, and whatever. We can all agree that LeBron James' son is in the NBA mostly 99% due to the fact that his son or his father is LeBron James. Because when you look at the skill set of Bronny Jr., you look at his overall game, his size, his di his dimensions, <clears throat> things of that nature, his athleticism, it don't seem otherworldly to me. It don't seem like he's one of the top uh, athletic guys out there. He ain't one of the bigger guys. He doesn't look special to me. He doesn't. So once again, this is why I laugh at LeBron James calling his son special. And we all know. And like I said, he's only special because he sees his son. He didn't look special out there in his, his debut, the first game. And he damn sure didn't look special out there last night with his father out there. And like I said, they combined for eight turnovers. The Los Angeles Lakers lost the preseason game, which is irrelevant. It's once again, LeBron James' son is getting exposed. And LeBron James is getting exposed because when we realize that his son doesn't belong in the NBA after you see these couple of preseason games, he don't look like he belongs out there. And he doesn't look like he's going to get any playing time. The only reason he would be getting playing time or the only reason that he's out there is once again because he's LeBron James' son. And he's been getting all the favoritism. He's been getting all the assistance from everybody around him, getting him to this point. And once again, they make excuses for Bronny James. No matter how bad he looks, they'll talk about his defense. Oh, he looked great on defense. He did this on defense. And yes, he might give the effort on the defensive end. But once again, is he special? Like LeBron James said, doesn't seem special to me. Even at age six or seven, he wouldn't have been special. And he doesn't seem special now. And he looks like he's going to continue to do, or he's going to follow in LeBron James, his father's footsteps with the turnovers. So once again, this goes to LeBron James, never work on his game. Still turn the ball over, man. I mean, it's insane to me the amount of times that LeBron James, or the amount of turnovers that LeBron James has in his career. And like I said, it's, it's astounding to me because they don't call LeBron James for the travels or the palming violations or the offensive fouls. They don't call him. For, those are turnovers, guys. So without all of those things being called over the last five years, let's say, this man still accumulates three and a half, four turnovers a game with regularity, still having five, six, seven turnover games with regularity. So this is what we're talking about, the evolution or the lack of evolution or evolu from LeBron James. Like I said, he's devolved since he's left Miami. He's gone downhill. It's been a downhill trajectory for LeBron James, but he disguises it, right, and hides it from his fans and the media under the guise of, look at LeBron James stats. LeBron James averaging 25 points a game. LeBron James putting up this many assists, this many rebounds. He hides behind the stats. LeBron James can lollygag on defense, stand around, not do any help defense, not be a true leader, not be a true competitor out there. He could flop around, walk off the court. Or no one cares about this stuff as long as he puts up the stats. As long as the stats are there, it don't matter. It's irrelevant. Right? It don't matter the Lakers are modern mediocrity and they're fighting for a play in every single season. It doesn't matter as long as the stats are there. And I've told you guys, LeBron James will not sacrifice those numbers to play less minutes a game or to give more effort on the defensive end and really be a great defensive player, a consistent defensive player. And I don't want to hear about the age excuses. Once again, if you're going to celebrate LeBron James for playing in year 21, for playing in year 22, for spending millions on his body... If you're going to celebrate all of that, then once again, you can't use it as a crutch and say, hey, LeBron James is 39, 40 years old. Well, you guys are bragging about the condition he keeps himself in. So if he keeps himself in great condition for someone 38, 39, 40 years old, then you can't turn around and say, hey, man, what do you want LeBron James to do? He's 40 years old. It don't go. It can't go both ways. The, the LeBron James fans, the La media and LeBron James himself, they want it both ways. Right? They want it both ways. They want LeBron James to be celebrated and never blamed. Right? That's what they want. They want everyone to hype up LeBron James, pump him up, but never blame him for nothing. Never take accountability. And for LeBron James, right, and the La media, they think that LeBron James himself, he thinks he can't hurt his legacy. So LeBron James says, I have nothing else to prove. I have nothing else to play for. So why are you playing? Because while you're playing, all you're doing is hurting your legacy. <clears throat> because once again, you're not living up to the standard. You're not playing defense. You're loudly gagging. You're walking off the court early. You're not being a true competitor. You're blaming your teammates. You're not taking any accountability, no ownership, no blame ever. That's the way the LeBron James camp wants it, right? Everyone in the media, all of his fans, they want him to be celebrated, never criticized, right? Now, you can't say anything negative about LeBron James. Everything he does is great. 
Even when it's not, it don't matter what he does. He walk off the court early, they got an excuse for it. He's flopping around the court, they got an excuse for it. LeBron James don't shake hands, they got an excuse for it. He's blaming the teammates, blaming the coach, don't take no ownership. They make an excuse for it. He comes to the post-game press conference, reads over stat line, they make an excuse for it. The man went to the, in the preseason last year, the man went to the locker room, changed into civilian clothes, came back to the bench and was eating on the bench in a preseason game. And I had a guy in the comment section told me that that was a baller move by LeBron James. That was a baller move. So once again, they're not holding LeBron James to any standard. They don't even know what a standard is. They have no idea what integrity means. They have no idea what honor or class is. They don't know about any of these things. So they could not hold LeBron James to any of those standards because they don't know what those things are. So when you hear LeBron James say, I want my damn respect, he's just as lost as his fans are. Not realizing you cannot ask for respect. You must earn it. The honor, the class, the integrity that I talk about on this channel, you can't buy it. You can't buy these things. LeBron James fans don't seem to get that. LeBron James don't seem to get that. LeBron James has a guilty conscience. That's why he'll say, hey, man, I never cheat the game. You have your wife come on stage, Corey the Goat. That's a guilty conscience, man. You're trying to speak your goat case into existence when there is no goat case for you. But you're going to keep telling yourself that you're the greatest of all time. You're going to keep telling everybody else that will listen to you you're the greatest of all time when you're nowhere near that. Nowhere near that. So LeBron James and Bronny Jr. make their debut last night, and they lose, and they combine for eight turnovers. And LeBron James' quote-unquote special son doesn't look special to me at all. He looks like a, a regular low-level NBA prospect that's borderline out of the league. That borderline shouldn't have even made the draft or been drafted. He should have been an undrafted free agent and should have been trying to make a team undrafted. But because he's LeBron James' son, he was given the benefit of the doubt. And LeBron James himself promotes this stuff. He doesn't want Bronny James to make it on his own merits like a real father would. Like, don't you want your kids to make it on their own merits to earn it themselves? Not use your name as a crutch and you use your influence to help your son? Also, you can celebrate what? The debut of LeBron James and Bronny Jr. So they can have their moment in the sun and say, oh, they're the first players to share the court, father and son duo. And his son's garbage. So once again, not impressed with this. It's all for LeBron James. This is not for Bronny, guys. He's using his son again as a prop. Using his son as a prop that he, like he's been doing for years. He's been using his family for a prop for years, guys, through social media. He used his kids as props. His wife is a prop. He used her. He literally had her go on the stage and call him the GOAT respectfully. You prop, you, you use as a prop. You embarrassed your wife. You had no respect for her. She has no respect for you. For her to come and embarrass herself like that. Once again, this is the dynamic that they want you to believe. LeBron is a great husband and father, though. But he don't have no respect for his son, Bronny. He don't want his son, Bronny, to make it his own merits. So he gives him his own name. And then he allows everyone else to push and pull Bronny into the NBA. Right, having Rich Paul call other teams up and say, hey, man, don't you guys draft Bronny because we're drafting him. Wasn't no one going to draft that fool? Bronny James, once again, should not even been drafted. He does not look like an NBA prospect, and he damn sure don't look special. All right, but he looks like he's going to be out there creating a lot of turnovers just like his father does, turning the ball over left and right. The LeBron James family, the Jameses, combined for eight turnovers in their debut. You guys know the deal, man. I'll catch you guys on the next one.